ज्ञानांजन शलाकया चक्षुन्मल तस्म श्रीगुर नम वंदेह श्रीगुरोतपदकमल श्रीगुर वैष्णवश्रीप साग्रजात सहगण रघुनाथ तम सजीव साध्वत सवधूत पिजन सहित श्रीकृष्ण चैतन्यदेव श्रीराधाकृष्णपदा सहगणलिता श्री विशाखान्विता हे कृष्णा करुणा सिंध दीनबंध जगत्पते गोपेश गोपिका कांता राधा कांता नमस्तुते तप्त कांचन गौरांगी राधे वृंदावनेश्वरी वृषभानुसुते देवी प्रणमा हरि प्रिय नमो महावधान्याय कृष्ण प्रेम प्रदायिने कृष्णाय कृष्ण चैतन्य नामिने गौर तुषे नम पंचतत्वात्मक कृष्ण भक्तस्वक भक्तावतार भक्ताख्यम नमा भक्तशक्ति श्रीकृष्ण चैतन्य प्रभु निनंद श्रीअद्वैत गदाधर श्रीवासदी गौरभक्तवृंद हरे कृष्ण हरे कृष्ण 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 हरे 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 राम हरे राम 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 हरे हरे जन्मादशयतन्वयादित चार्थे सुभिज्ञस्वराठ तेने ब्रह्म हृदय आदि कवे मुह्यंत सूरय तेजो वारी मृदा यथा विनिमय यत्र यसर्गो मृषा धामना स्वयं सदा निरस्तुहक सत्यम परम धीम नारायण नमस्कृत नर चरोत्तम देवी सरस्वती व्यास तथो जय मुदीर स्वस्ति अस्त विश्व खल प्रसीदता ध्यान तो भूता शिव मिथो धिया मन से भद्रम भजता दधोक्षज आवेशता नौमतिरप्य हेतु रीडिंग फ्रॉम श्रीमद्भागवत कैंटो फाइव चैप्टर टेन क्लोस नंबर ट्वेंटी थ्री डायलॉग बिटवीन किंग रहुगणा एंड भरत महाराज who was carrying him on his shoulder and was not doing a good job therefore king became angry 
and tries to abuse him, first sarcastically and then directly. So then Jad Bharati spoke and gave some philosophical statements about body and self. So now King is countering them. And one of the things which he said was that there is no point in punishing me. Punishment is useless. Because King said, I will punish you, I will fix your brain. So now he is saying that punishment also has its purpose. Sasta vigopata niprati prajanam yakin karo vaina pinashti pishtam svadharma maradhana machutasya yadi himano vidahat yakhavam. So he says that you said that giving punishment is useless. So my reply to that is that a king is established to rule over the people <coughs> and he is actually the servant of people and it is his duty to punish the miscreants, criminals, those who are troubling others. Therefore it is not a waste and to follow one's dharma that is the service to God and by following that one becomes free from one's bondage to life so how do you say that it is useless if the king is not going to be punishment then everybody will become frivolous and whoever has the power will exploit the weak which is very natural in human beings <coughs> so it's a jaduktam Swaswami abhavo dhruva iti tatra ha shastra iti. So he is saying what you said that there is no one is master and no one is servant. So he says adhruvatve api yadi yada yon ripati sa prajanam shastra gopta cha bhavati. So he says as far as we live in the society we need some discipline. Somebody has to control. If you just leave it to people, then there will be chaos and indiscipline all around. Yacca uktam stav dhade shiksha pishth peshaita tatra hai yacchuta sa kinkro madhvita sa pishtam na pinashti yata stav dhattvadi apanagame api shastu vishwarasya agya sampadne ni palavatta. So to say that <coughs> correct a wrongdoer is a waste, I say that it is not a waste because I do it as an order of the Lord. And even if I am not able to correct somebody, somebody is behaving improperly and even if I cannot reform that person or if somebody is crazy and I cannot make that person sane, still it does not matter, I am doing my duty. As far as I am concerned, I do my duty, what I am assigned to. And Krishna says that karma neva dhikavaste mahale shukadachana, that you should just perform your duty without becoming attached to the result. So if the result comes as desired, that is good, but if it does not come, that does not mean I don't do need it. Somebody is a cook, it is his duty to cook. And if he is not able to cook properly, or people don't like, that doesn't mean now he gives a cooking when there is no At least, even if it is not like there is some food to eat, so he can then find out why, why it is not liked, but the solution is not that now I don't go. So in the same way King has to bring discipline in the society and still people are not reformed, 
It does not mean that he gives up. He continues to do what he is assigned to do. So therefore it is not waste. And at least he will get the benefit of doing his duty. As Krishna says that karma naiv he is that one becomes perfect by performing one's karma. So that is his recommendation. Pajasasana lakshanam svadharma rupam achutasya aradhanam nipai himana kuruvan svasya aghagam pratyavasam moham jahati. So if the king is following his swadharma, his duty, in the form of disciplining the society, controlling the society, and does it as an order of the Lord, then it becomes worship of the Lord. And by doing this, he will become free from all sins. So there is no, nothing wrong in his part. Karnayu is some siddhi vasti tajan karni. So Lokshan Ramaki sometimes in Kartumi or Kam Kartumi. That you want to set standard for others to get, give a good example once to perform his duty even if it is not needed. And Krishna says that. There is nothing for him to do yet, he is doing. Now, Vapta, Vapta, Bhim. Vartaya Vachakarmani. Still, he is always performing action. So, this is his reply to him. Tanme Bhavan Naradeva Bhimana Madena Tucci Kritam Satamasya. Krishishta Matri Drishamarta Bandho Yatha Tare Sada Avadhyanam Amra Avadhyanam Amra So now he is speaking about the mistake which he has made. He says that you are very compassionate and being proud that I am a king, I have disrespected a great holy person like you. So now please be gracious to me so that I become free from this offense of disrespect to you. So on spiritual path one of the obstacles is to disrespect some holy person. So that becomes a big blockage in one's progress. Although he did not know that he is a holy person, but somehow unknowingly he has offended him. That is another thing that Bharat did not feel offended. But one has to be very careful not to disrespect. We should not disrespect anybody. But specifically the holy people, the teachers, or holy places, or the form of God, or holy scriptures, they should not be disregarded or disrespected. Because these are the basis of spiritual life. After all, we got knowledge from the scriptures. And if we disrespect them, then how are you going to get knowledge? You get knowledge also from holy people. Scriptures are explained by them. Holy people are those who live life according to the scriptures. Who have realized it. So if we disregard them, means we are actually disregarding our process itself. And if we are disregarding the process, how can we progress? Eh? So now he is worried, the king who was actually spiritually inclined and he was going to see Lord Kapila for spiritual instructions. So 
so he now feels that he has made a very good mistake by disrespecting Bharat. For that reason, he is asking for his forgiveness. Yasmal evam mama taduktam vipritam vibhati tas tasmat nardevo ahnamitya vimano voyo mado nigya manyatvadi mithya garva stena tutsikrita. He may ki jananti ityanardita sattama bhavadrasayi. So he says, because I am proud. thinking I am a king and for me what you are saying it is not making sense I feel just the opposite of what you say that is because I think I am a king and I know better than others and kings obviously know a lot to be a king for anybody to hold a position like this has to do many things. But that does not mean that they are omniscient or they know everything. So he says that I am thinking that I know and I have a false pride of knowing. And then I think what these people know, and like that I disregard. So the disrespect which he is referring to is not just that he engaged him in carrying his palanquin, but actually also not understanding what Bharat was saying and trying to counter it. So, Maitri Drisham Drujivo Ayam Tasya Me Maitri Drisham Drujivo Ayam Narketi Patishyati Iti Vibhavya Sneha Yuktam Drishtim Krishishta Karot So, therefore, I want your affectionate glance on me because now the king came down, he is sitting at his feet and speaking. So, he says that you please bless me that I become free from this offence not only offence to you but I may have also offended others in the same way in the past so forgive me for that and this is the last verse which he speaks Navikriya Vishwas Rohit Sakhasya Sammena Vita Bhimate Shrutavapi Mahan Vimanat Svakritad Himadri Nakshanti Adurada Pishulapani So he says that I, I see that you are free from any bodily attachment and you are a great devotee of Lord Hari who is friend of everyone and therefore you see everyone equally and thus you do not take offence. It's like a child sometimes may disrespect the parents, the parent may not take offence. Knowing that he is just a child, does not know what is honour and dishonour. So like that you are a great devotee and I am just like a child not knowing how to behave properly and I have behaved improperly therefore you have a reason to be upset but because you are great and you don't identify with your body I see that there is no change in your mind you are not angry or upset or disturbed by my behavior. So this is the quality of great personalities that they don't become immediately disturbed, they don't react 
because they remain situated in their own self. They, they, do not, they do not identify with the body, they, or they have control over the mind. So they are not just guided by the material samskaras like ordinary people, as you were talking yesterday. Their intelligence is not sleeping. That's why they are called Buddha. Buddha means awake. Buddhi means intelligence. And awakening is a function of intelligence. So when somebody is awake, that is called Buddha or Prabuddha. So their intelligence is awake, therefore they observe everything and take action considering what is proper and what is improper. In normal human life, people don't take action, they are mostly reacting to their situation. They are the victims of their situation, external as well as the internal. So their internal samskaras, impressions, the mind, and the external situation is controlling them. And they are basically like a toy in the hands of the situation. It is rare that people actually take a decision with conscience, with consciousness. More they are influenced by the mind in the impressions and in the work of so Bharat is not like that and this is what he is informing and that since you are like that so he says that if I disregard or disrespect or offend a great person like you then I will be destroyed completely even if I am powerful like Lord Shiva. So this Worse is important because offense is very, very dangerous, especially in the path of bhakti. Because the goal of bhakti is to attain love for the Lord, for God, and reciprocate with Him. So, and offense means to create disturbance. So if you love somebody, you don't cause disturbance to that person. Love means you do everything which is favorable to the person, which is pleasing to the person you love. It is not possible that you do something which will knowingly, which will irritate the person you love. That is not love. So, Lord is not just one person, but He is the complete whole. And especially he has his devotees whom he loves. So when we love Lord, we also love people whom he loves. If we respect God, we also respect things which God likes. If we disregard them, then Lord is not happy. If I like you, then I also like what you like. I respect you, then I also respect whom you respect. If I don't respect that, then you will feel upset with me. So saintly people, holy people, they are surrendered to God, then God also likes them. And if somebody troubles them, then God is not happy. If we say that paritrana sadhanam vinasha chaduskritam that I come, dharma samsthapna arthasam bhavami yogi I come to protect the holy people, to sadhus. That is the purpose. So God even takes the trouble of coming to the material world to protect the devotees. So naturally he will not be happy if we trouble the devotees, trouble the holy people. And this is what he is mentioning here, that 
Namshatya Duradapi Shulapana. So he says that I am not very powerful person, but even if I am a powerful person like Mahadev, Lord Shiva, even then I will be finished by offending a person like me. So to speak of common person. So Sri Vismat Sri Kulti says that Yasmad evam mametva duktam vipritam vibhati nanu tvatkritena tiraskarena asmadrisham dukham not padyante putastava aghastatrahane so if Bharat Maharaj, he poses a question to the king that why are you so much worried, why are you so afraid of offense? People like us do not become offended and we don't feel pain even if somebody disrespects us. So you have disrespected me, it doesn't bother me. So where is the sin or where is the offense? So then he speaks this verse that Tav Tavapi Taviyadipi So he says that although it is not causing you any pain but still you are a great person and if a person like me offends you, then definitely I will be in trouble. Sulpani Shadrisha Piyadiktam Sersham Mahapurusha Padapansukhe Narasthate Vasu. He is quoting a verse, I think, from the story of Lord Shiva and Sati the Daksha sacrifice is Sati is the wife of Lord Shiva and daughter of Daksha and Daksha has disrespected Shiva because there was an assembly where Shiva was sitting and they were invited Brahma was also there and Daksha came who was the head of Prajapati. When he came, everybody stood up except Brahma, who is the father of Daksha, and Shiva is his son-in-law. So Shiva should also have uh, stood up, but he did not. So then Daksha became very angry in it. So look at this fool, he is sitting, everybody is respecting him, but he is just sitting. Then there was a heavy argument, I mean, cursing and counter cursing from both sides. No? Not Shiva doing cursing, but Shiva was sitting quietly, but his followers did not take it. And then it ended in a very bad relation. So after some time, Daksha did another yagya, but he did not invite Shiva this time. Although Shiva is his son in law. Should be invited like we invite people, relatives, in some forms, yes. But Sati came there. Although Shiva was saying, Don't go there, you will be disrespected. But she said, I want to go and see my sisters who are all coming there, my mother, I have not seen them for a long time. So she came, and when she came, she was disrespected by Daksha. Daksha did not even see her. Properly, although she was one of the favorite daughters of Daksha. And then she saw that there was no honor or place kept for Shiva in the Yagya. So then she became mad completely. <coughs> and then she spoke this verse that Sersham Mahapurusha Pada Panshuti Nirastha Teja Sutta Deva Shogana. That if one disrespects Mahapurushas like Lord Shiva, then they will be destroyed. Which actually happened to Daksha, he was killed later on. 
so that is teaching me a lesson so you know the lesson in this chapter so it is sarartha darshinyam harshinyam bhakta chaitasam panchame dasmo adhyaya samita samita satam this is the end of this commentary on the 10th chapter of it so after speaking this then the king rahuguna he became silent and he was waiting for jarakrat to speak so 11th chapter is all spoken by jarakrat his teaching is very nice from the short 17 slokas so he says that he thinks now is the time to give some instruction to the king seja kovida kovida vada vadan vadasya thonati vidam varishtha nasuriyo hi vyavahara menum tatva marshena sahamananti so first he is telling the king that you are not a scholar and you are talking like one so first he puts him in his proper place so i don't think that you know he says a covid you are ignorant covid the vad vad but you are talking the words which are spoken by learned people so sometimes people memorize words and then you talk now people have this tendency in nature to speak big words without understanding the meaning or without realizing the import of those words so the king was also talking like that not understanding what bharat was saying so he says akovidha kovidha vada vadan vadas that you are you are speaking scholarly language but you are unfit for it which means that the, what king is saying he does not know he is not understood it or realized he is just doing the lip service it's all coming from the mouth so some people are good in talking and not much inside but they can talk very nicely this talking is also an art so they know the art of speaking and they can speak expertly and influence people so they may be able to influence ignorant people but they cannot influence somebody who knows so if the king was speaking to the other carriers like that they were very impressed by him oh, it's a great learned man but not bharat he said you are stupid what are you saying said the king so when krishna started speaking bhagavad gita in second chapter he also made a similar statement so chanan sochas sochas to pragya vadan se bhasha he said you are speaking pragya like a big intelligent person but you are lamenting so this is incoherent you talk like a big scholar and then you are crying like a baby so what does it mean your mind is agitated you are disturbed but you are reciting philosophical slogans So he says, you don't understand. So, so chananu so chastam pagya vana se bhasa. Gata sunna gata sunna so nana so chanti pandita. Those who are pandit, who are really learned, they don't lament like that. So immediately Krishna told Arjuna that whatever you have said has no meaning. So he is saying exactly the same. Nāti vidāṁ varīṣṭhā. He says this is not very much appreciated. 
So you cannot be counted among the learned people. You are just talking from your head. Na surya hi vyavahara menam Because those who are tattvagyani purus those who know the reality then this type of behavior which you are talking about Swami and Sevak, servant and master this is not accepted when we are talking about the Tattva, about the Absolute Truth. You can speak about this karma, etc. When we are talking about the normal life, yes, you have duties to perform, but I was not talking about the duties of a king. I was talking what is beyond that. So you are mixing these two things. So he says, those who are learned, they don't mix things like that. And do not accept this materialistic duties in, when discussing the subject matter of the Absolute. So Sri Vishnath says that, Mansai Visam Saro Yad Vritti Namanantata Ekadasatra Tainaiva Moksha Bhakti Yodita. So he gives the gist of this chapter that in this chapter he is going to speak that the life which we experience is all a play of mind. Manso Vritti Nam, all the different states of mind, that's what the world is all about. And mind has various states. There is no end of it. There is desires, thoughts, feelings, emotions. So this is all the world is all about. So this is what is described here. And then how to get rid of this bondage of the mind, says he explains Bhakti is all the time. That by devotion to God then one can become free from this. So then he comments on this verse, Tom Kovido na bhavsi. He says you are not learned. Atsa Kovida nam ye vada with a graha tatulya ne vada nvansi. But you are actually speaking statements which are spoken by learned people. So obviously the king must have studied, heard, associated with people. Athavateva atyantam vidusham madhya sveshtho na bhavasi. So therefore you will not be counted great among the learned people. Maybe among normal people you may be counted. So nirast padpe desha arandopi durmahite. Where there are no trees, even a castrol plant is considered as a tree. Because there are no trees there. Even the blind one-eyed is a king. So, but not among the two-eyed. Yata suriyaha kovida etam vyavaharam vyavaharikam vastum cha tattu avnarsena tattu charena tattu vastuna cha sahana avananti Drishtanta Adina Nadhya Santi Tayo Parasparati Vadhamya So he says that the objects, materialistic objects, materialistic life, materialistic rules and regulations, they are different and they should not be mixed or practiced when we talk about the spiritual life, we talk about absolute reality. We should keep these two things separate. So then he is refuting because he gave the example of the pot, on the fire, water and then rice, how it cooks and therefore the soul should get also the pain. So now he is explaining this. What is the discrepancy in that example and why we should not give this type of example to prove something. 
this will actually make a wrong conclusion. It's like sometimes the impersonalists give the example that if you take a salt doll or a sugar doll and put it into the ocean, then it merges into the ocean and becomes, it never comes out. So like that, when you become spiritually realized, you merge into the absolute. So this is a material example. It may not be true. What if the doll is made of stone? You can put it in the ocean and it will not melt. It will not dissolve. So we are not like the sugar dolls. The Atma is not like that. So how can it dissolve? So sometimes people just give example and make their point. But by example you can always give counter example also. You say you put a sugar doll and it will merge and like that. You merge and also well, the doll is actually made of wood and you put it and it comes out also. <coughs> so I can go other way around. <coughs> so tathai sthali tapat payasa tapa tat tapa standula tapa iti tandula se jadas se sthalya di vi jadai vanni na api jadai na yatha sansarga tathai dehindriya di vi jadai mukh jiva se chidvastu na sansarga bhava de dehadi shramai Nasrama Siddhyati. So he says, you gave the example that there is a pot which has water in it and inside there is rice, you put it on the fire. Then the fire heats the pot, pot heats the water, water heats the rice and then the rice gets cooked. <coughs> and by this we are trying to prove that there is a body, body has senses in it and then there is mind and then there is soul. And by coming in contact with the mind, the pain which is felt in the body or the exhaustion because you are carrying, said you are tired and says, no, I am not tired. So this thing which we feel in the body, it, it is experienced in the mind and then through the mind it comes into the Atma, to the soul. So why do you say that soul does not suffer? So Bharat says that body, senses, mind, intelligence, ego, they are all material, they are inert. The discrepancy in the example is that in case of the pot, all of them are inert. But in the case of Atma and everything else, there is a difference that Atma is not inert, Atma is conscious being. And therefore it is not influenced. If it was another material thing, then it can be transferred. And because Atma is not material. So he says, Dehendriyadi Jadai Mukta Jivasya Chidvastuna Sansarga So a person who has realized oneself, as separate from the body, then he does not become disturbed or influenced by it. Those who are identifying with the body, they will say, I am tired. Because they are identifying with it. Their Atma is also not tired. But because of identification, they will speak like that, they will feel like that. But not one who is Mukta Purusha like so Bharat says therefore I am not tired because I am not the body. Body may feel and that is body's business, not my. Baddha jivasya tu jada deha dhyasat jada tvena ter bhakti evasrama says for a person who is not liberated, who is not enlightened who is bound by the body and mind, who is associating with them and identifying with them. For such a person, he will feel that he is hungry, he is tired, he is sleepy. He will feel all that. But one who is liberated, he will say that body is tired, body is sleepy, body is hungry. He will actually see it that. So therefore, don't mix these two things together. 
But Jad Bharat is speaking about himself. The king was speaking about Jad Bharat, that you are tired and said, no, I am not. So he is speaking on his own behalf. And King Rahangana was speaking about Bharat without knowing, but he is thinking that he is just like anyone else. So therefore he is saying to not mix these two. Iti Baddha Jeevai Vyasmabhir Mukta Jeeva Nam Asmakam Sadrishya Sambhavad Anumanam Nagat. So he says that liberated people like me and conditioned persons like you, we are dissimilar. You cannot give the example of a conditioned person and try to prove something about the liberated person. So he says because of this dissimilarity, this type of example does not work. So that's what he says that Tattva Marshaya Sahamananti Nahi Yavaharami. That when you are talking about Atma being free from the body, then don't try to superimpose the qualities of the mind on to it. You have to separate from it. You cannot superimpose. So this is, he begins. So I will stop here because now he is going to go more and more into this mind and how the mind functions and the senses and how the feelings come. So I will bring that tomorrow. Is there any question? Um, I don't know if this is related to, to uh, uh, what we covered tonight, but um, one of the concepts uh, uh, that we'd like to see in a perfect world would be that all men are equal. And, and uh, we were discussing this today and, and we thought, well, uh, somebody that is at a lower level uh, of development, uh, such as uh, when we took the, the example of a beggar, uh, is not at the same level as somebody who who is more developed. And, and you know, you talk about somebody who's enlightened and all that. And um, what? How do you feel about the, 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 this concept? How do we kind of? Um, uh, relate this this term of being equal versus the development of a person at, at, at any stage in, in their progress in their life? Well, my view of equal is that equal means that everybody has to be respected according to their level. And just because somebody is more powerful, whether physically, psychologically, economically or socially, that should not be a cause to exploit the other, but rather help them. That is what equality is. Equality is not that we are just all equal and therefore whatever you do I also can do or I should also do that. That is not the meaning of equality. So equality is that whatever is your level, and whatever is my level, then I should respect your level and you should respect my level. It should not be a cause of disrespect and exploitation. So that is the inequality. Otherwise this equality is also confusing. As people try to think of equality in terms of the economy or just doing things. If you are smoking, then I should also smoke. If you drink, I should also drink. This type of equality. Or if men are doing something, then women should also do that. That is not necessary. The problem comes when we start thinking that men are superior and women are inferior and therefore they should not be allowed to do things. 
This main thing that it is their priority that it will be made. They should be allowed if they have the ability, they should do it. On the other side, women should not think this because men are doing it, we should also do that. So in both sides is problematic. For each given talents and we should use them to right. the fullest. That's what I'm saying, your status means that your nature, your talent, your you know, disposition of your mind. So you function accordingly. they are not created. Souls are not created, they are just... Mm -hmm. But inequality is because of our desires and actions. We all have different desires and we take different actions and actions bring out result. So that brings difference or inequality in our social, economic or intellectual levels. So that is not that is not possible that this will be all the same. <coughs> that we all have different experience, therefore we have different way of seeing things, knowing, interpreting, and we have different desires. So this variety will remain. It's Yes. There is nothing wrong with that. We understand it. Problem comes when we think that I am superior and then you must do according to my will. Or if I am following certain ideology then you must also follow. And if you don't follow then I will smash you. That is problematic. Relative truth mm -hmm. of each person. And we can discuss and I can try to convince you that my ideology is better for you. Not that it is better and therefore you can follow. Maybe it is better for you but I am following. I can try to convince you. If you are convinced you follow. If not, then I should not coerce you into following it. So, but that's what human beings do. That's what brings problem. And this is because really people are not so much interested in realizing but taking it as a more ego issue. That ego problem we already discussed that how it always wants to be superior. So whatever ideology I follow then this is better and then you should also follow that. Then I feel that um, I have majority, I feel confidence. But if so many are not following me, I feel well, there may be something wrong. So I have actually lack of faith in my own system. But if I have faith, then I don't need to impose it on anybody. If it is good and I'm following it, I can talk about it, but I don't have to force it on somebody's head. So if people take more interest in actually experiencing whatever path, spiritual practice path they are following or ideology they are following, then they will not try to subdue or suppress others unnecessarily. But that's what people don't do. So this is how you try to mix the materialism into spirituality. This materialistic idea of dominating others. This is brought into spirituality. Then in the name of religion we create havoc. So that's what he's saying, we don't mix these two things.
since yesterday a class I have something in my mind but I cannot really understand. Means how does this relate to each other? For example, I was thinking when a child, a baby is born and a child grows up, the most important thing, what I think, what it needs is love. Love from the mother that it can develop healthy. Let's say like this. If the child is deprived of this, it will have some disturbances, obviously. But how does this relate to Atman? If we say we are only Atman, but this is actually a very practical material thing. How does this relate to each other? I cannot really get the link. Because also you were telling the story about this lady who was teaching her children only that they are only the Atman, but I'm sure she was also holding them, giving them the milk, giving them love. So that's why he's saying so. that you don't mix these two things. Therefore, when you have to take care, then you take care. That is the Vavahar. That is the, I don't know what is the exact translation, empirical life. You can say the practical side of it. And then the spiritual part of it, philosophical part. So if I am Atma, it does not mean that body does not need food. Because Atma is not eating, but body needs, so body has to be given food and it has to be given proper food. So in the same mind needs loving relationships, so that has to be given. So she was trying to train them up, but this does not mean that she was not taking care of them. So you understand, she understands that this baby is actually an Atma and I want the baby to understand this, but Baby does not know it yet. That's what I'm saying that you have to deal at the level at which the person is. This is what real equality means. So the baby is not self-realized. She may be self-realized. So knowing this, when it comes to dealing at the level of the baby, she understands what are the needs of the baby and she gives that. So then there is no problem. But then she is training the baby also to become elevated like herself. But that baby is in the state of still that need because the soul is not yet in that state of yeah. realization. The soul is still not mm -hmm. awakened. So it still has the needs of the body and whatever? Yes. So there is some hello from Manu to Jaya and Kamala. And then there is Sarada sending hello to everybody. <laughs> I have a question about this um, soul which gives the energy and the consciousness to the bodies. Mm. So then, feeling tired, feeling hungry, feeling unhappy, feeling happy, all this emotion and so on. These things are coming to the mind. But uh, a self-realized person sees the two, these two things separate. I mean that all these things are happening in the body and uh, they don't affect him, they don't affect means they don't affect the soul. They don't affect the soul. doesn't mean that the body is not affected. So then... And again, when we say that soul gives energy to the body, it does not mean it gives you energy to work. It energizes to function. To function. It only gives consciousness. Mm -hmm. The energy is going to come from the food, mm -hmm. from the air, from the water. That is not, that soul is not to supply it. Yeah, body is material and it will get energy from, only from the material elements. Mm -hmm. Soul's function is just to make it alive. Mm -hmm. You have to get energy to the cell. Whether you eat or you take prana or you do sun yoga or whatever. Anyway, material elements are nourishing material. But you have to nourish. Mm -hmm. 